this is going to be uh, WordPress and higher education, the Pantheon perspective. Um, we as a, you know, uh, Pantheon is a, we call ourselves a website operations platform. So, so that includes the, the all important cap capacity of hosting uh, customer websites and hosting WordPress. Um, that, that's core to what we do and everything else that we do um, uh, kind of leverages off of that. Um, but there are a lot of great hosts out there. And even if I kind of think we're the best, obviously, number one, I'm biased. And number two, if we are the best, it's by just a little bit. Uh, because there are lots of other great uh, hosts out there. But what we do that I believe is really authentically unique is a couple things. Uh, one, we help customers who want to go sort of, they want to go all in on these professional development practices, version control, package management, continuous integration. A lot of what was talked about last time, those are sort of not negotiable on Pantheon. You have to do it that way, um, which for some people isn't is not right, uh, but for for others uh, is when they want to really embrace those best practices and make that standard procedure. We're a platform that helps people do that. And then the other thing we do is we help uh, customers. We've really built a platform that's meant to manage large scale site portfolios that could include multiple different technologies um, or multiple different flavors within one specific CMS. Uh, and some of that is actually due to our history. Uh, we had as a, you know, we're uh, as a company now, we're, we're fairly well established. We've been around for almost 14 years. Uh, but when we were a baby startup, you know, just a couple of years into uh, building this platform, we were lucky enough to get the University of California at Berkeley as an early customer. Um, they actually saw a presentation we did at a camp uh, and their their deputy CIO walked into our office uh, the following Monday, our little tiny office with all 11 of us at the time and said, I saw what you did. Um, I've been trying to do something similar myself and uh, I'm about to just pull the plug on it because it's been two years and, and we're not doing, we're just not doing this on prem. Um, so I need you to sell me Pantheon, but for 500 websites, can you do that? And we were like, yes, of course we can, sir. Uh, and immediately set to work, figuring out what it would take to meet those needs. And, you know, uh, that was more than a decade ago. And uh, as a result of some of that early track getting laid down to serve that big customer, we have a really, really differentiated product value for the folks that have these big site portfolios. Um, you know, again, the things that we do that are different, just to, to, to reiterate, I should have flipped this slide, you know, we basically do awesome with the hosting. So great user experience through traffic spikes, take care of all the security, all the underlying infrastructure. You can forget about servers because because we've got all that handled. Um, we have this workflow that really helps teams innovate, right? Without putting any of those live sites at risk, that's a huge thing. And then our portfolio management capabilities, they really, when it comes down to it, it's a lot of like kind of overview, you know, there's some governance, but the value is that you can create the right amount of consistency without forcing everyone to like literally use the exact same thing and having this big bottleneck or this monolith that's in the way of everything. Um, and we have this deep history with the higher education market. So I just wanted to like lay down some of our bona fides. Um, you know, today we work with uh, just about a third of uh, NCAA Division I schools. So these are the larger schools in the U.S. Uh, we work with eight out of eight of the Ivy League. Um, there are, uh, you know, our platform supports more than just WordPress. We have a history in Drupal, which has a foothold in fire, higher ed, as we'll show in a second. But we have over 2,200 distinct WordPress EDU instances, which includes 200 multi-site instances. So that's like many more than, uh, you know, that's like that, you know, more thousands of sites. Um, those sites are receiving today, just those WordPress EDU sites are receiving about a billion requests a month. Um, and so, you know, it, it's a, a pretty wide span. Um, but I think even more importantly for us, we have um, you know, on average over 6,000, uh, sorry, 60,000 deploys every month. Um, and that's, you know, code pushes from developers, whether that's keeping up with WordPress uh, core or doing some innovative development that are flowing through our system and out across that uh, network of sites. And that's it's really exciting because, you know, kind of what we sort of, um, tend to um, advocate to people is the the idea of being agile and having you know an ongoing pace of continuing to innovate and build on top of the the core website that's there um, in order to keep it vital and fresh and, and doing the best that it can possibly do. Um, so let's talk about trends in the industry. 
Um, this is not specific to us. Uh, so this is a, um, a data source that I love called the HTTP archive. Uh, the HTTP archive is a independent sort of nonprofit entity, which is supported largely by Google, but it's coming out of like kind of the, the Google does things for the open web arm of Google. Um, and what they do is they run a pretty impressive crawling operation that, you know, as a, it's been growing and growing over the past, I think they've been doing it for almost 10 years. Uh, but, you know, uh, their July survey of the web, they crawled just, you know, almost uh, uh, 6,375,000 uh, distinct sites. Um, and what they what they do as part of that is they they pull out all of the performance details of those sites. They pull out everything uh, that was used to create those sites, like all of the, the the actual content of the pages and the files that are referenced. And they run all of the sites through Wappalyzer, which is a, a a technology that uses a bunch of fingerprints to detect what technologies are sort of in play in supporting these sites. Um, and uh, and and then they make all of that data available to anyone uh, to query on their own via Google Cloud Platform's BigQuery uh, data engine, which is a super cool uh, product. If you if you're into data and you haven't played with it, I'd you know put it on your your free time list or your exploratory time list to check out because what BigQuery allows you to do is to run queries. It's queer, as you would imagine, um, across like these really, really large data sets and get results back very quickly. And you only you pay by the amount of data you query, not, you know, and, and not by the time. So so, for example, you know, we're able I was able to run queries across this data set that has, you know, six million records in it. Um, and actually the, the actual data set because it includes all the technologies that are used in the sites, actually has close to a billion records in it. Um, it has 6 million and some that are specifically related to the CMS that are running the sites that they survey. And I get responses back in like two to three seconds, which is amazing. And at the end of the session, it turns out I've examined, you know, a couple hundred gigabytes worth of data and it costs me about 45 cents. Uh, so pretty cool. Um, and what this uh, query shows us is that, you know, open source is dominant in the EDU market. Um, I think that's uh, not surprising to, to anyone who, who works there, but it's, you know, worth just understanding that, hey, like, it's a, it's a, a, a dominant pattern, um, you know, open source. A lot of open source projects came out of academia, so it's not surprising. Um, and you know, of all the sites surveyed, WordPress has the the, the leading market share, and Drupal is a strong second. And then you kind of go down the long tail from there. Um, Omni CMS is a is a SaaS tool that's specifically targeted at higher education. Adobe, obviously, Adobe Experience Manager, they have a that's like one of the the, the big kahunas in running websites. And then you got you know Joomla's in there still. You got some sites run on. Squarespace, other little sort of, you know, point solution type website builders. And then, you know, Sitecore is a competitor to Adobe that comes from the Microsoft ecosystem. And there are definitely some campuses that are very Microsoft centric. So they probably are happy using Sitecore. But the, the takeaway here is that WordPress actually has, you know, just by volume of URLs that end in .edu that, you know, in this survey, this doesn't actually serve the entire web. So where there's probably lots of sites that it's not covering, but in the, the sample that it got, which is pretty significant, WordPress is the market leader. Um, that probably doesn't surprise people on, on the call because we're all here for WordPress and higher ed, but I think it's useful and helpful to see that information quantified uh, so that you can talk about it. What I can bring to the conversation then is a little bit more of the the, uh, the qualitative story. What we've observed as we work with customers who are in the higher ed uh, vertical, where we have a you know a lot of history and a, and a lot of um, uh, strength, uh, as they have adopted WordPress over time, um, I would say you know candidly, if I went back, you know. 10 years ago, certainly five or six years ago, there was resistance within a lot of higher ed IT organizations to WordPress. 
for all of the stereotypical reasons you might imagine. Um, people thought it would be a security nightmare. Um, they were worried about like having um, you know a bunch of like rando people putting up sites that they would have to have to then support over the long haul. Um, you know, being in in university IT can be a challenge because you you sort of are in this very federated environment where you can't specifically say no to anyone. Um, and yet you will end up being responsible for anything that's carrying a university domain, whether you, you know, you approve of how it got created or not. Um, and so what we have seen um, over the past, you know, five, six, seven years is a lot of um, uh, institutions go on this journey where they had some WordPress sites, like who didn't have some WordPress sites? Nobody, nobody was like WordPress free, um, unless it was a very small institution and they only had like one website, right? So if you're thinking about these bigger university uh, contexts, there was like, everybody had some WordPress going on somewhere because um, WordPress is ubiquitous. But often that was like a microsite um, or something that was, you know, managed at the edges of the organization. Uh, there are definitely cases where uh, uh, universities have taken specifically like their flagship, their main .edu domain uh, onto WordPress um, as, a, as a sort of a, um, uh, a path towards some innovation. Uh, but the common case that we saw was there was, you know, sort of some organic but disconnected adoption of WordPress across campus. You know, the next layer of maturity is um, uh, institutions looking at adopting the multi-site network approach, like just like we we just heard about with the uh, University of Chicago. I mean, they have a pretty sophisticated adoption of you know it's a network of networks, which is getting to be pretty um, uh, pretty sophisticated. But the 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 adoption of WordPress kind of like as a centrally governed tool um, often flows through this next step of leveraging the multi-site network capabilities. And and these are this is great for the the sort of turnkey use case that you have across a lot of campuses where it's like the professor blog or, you know, the, the student thing um, where every student has a space to showcase their, uh, their coursework or other things. Um, you know, within schools, uh, sometimes there will be a site network that, you know, can serve for, um, you know, when they, when they can get everyone to agree on what a departmental presence should look like and they can lock that down, um, that can work well. But where we've seen this sometimes not work well is when it gets a little bit, <clears throat> when you get a little bit over ambitious and it just is like, well, anybody who needs a website will be able to get a site on the network. And the, the problem that we've seen historically and, you know, folks who've been in WordPress for a long time are not unfamiliar with this is if you don't really sort of constrain the scope of what you're trying to support within that network instance, um, it can get challenging and, and squirrely. You'll end up building an overly complicated uh, in installation or you'll have, you know, lots of plugins, but only some are used here and some are used there in different ways with different configurations. And, and that ends up becoming kind of challenging to manage over time. Uh, the, the, the site network use case that we've seen that really knocks out of the park is when it can be targeted at a more narrow use case and you're kind of, you're positioning it to people as like, we have a turnkey solution for a specific problem and it's, you, you get what you get and you don't get upset. Um, and, and that's a good one. Um, once you start thinking about adopting WordPress across a campus really for for as the as the primary or the main recommended web tool you're really thinking about wordpress itself as a platform you're not thinking about a wordpress site you're not thinking about a site network you're thinking about how do we as an institution do wordpress in a way that is high quality meets our standards can be governed um, delivers consistency and that can be managed in a way that's helpful by multiple teams because within higher ed institutions, there are all, there's always more than one uh, uh, team at work. Uh, you know, there's central IT, there's edge IT, there's, you know, an agency that got brought in because somebody got a grant to do something innovative. And what we see with uh, really mature institutions is they start to invest in the practices and um, uh, uh, technologies that allow them to support WordPress as a platform in multiple contexts um, across campus. Um, and, th and, and they love it. Um, 
if you think about this, you know, uh, as a value proposition, it's really this idea of flexibility within a framework. It's the, you know, you can, you can have a lot of things managed together, but you're not forcing everyone to use the same thing. And so if you think about like flexibility versus scalability, um, or, or cost and maintenance, right? You, you, you know, world where you think about everything's just doing one-off WordPress implementations that kind of start from scratch, right? That's ultimate flexibility, but it's never going to scale. It's going to be way too expensive to do every site that way. And certainly way too much of a headache to manage long-term. Um, the kind of mega site, multi-site approach where it's like, it's trying to be all things to all people. I, I tend to take, to just try to make people, I'm, I think it's good for people to be a little afraid of that because it never ends well in my experience. And so you need to understand that that is usually a path to a lot of frustration, you know, late nights and disappointment so that you, you get the discipline when you're thinking about that sort of approach to really be discreet about what solution you're solving with which multi-site network. Um, and that's why I like the idea of networks of networks is interesting, but basically being able to scope things so that you really are delivering a turnkey solution to the stakeholders, not saying, well, you can make whatever kind of website you want with this, um, because that's that that pro value proposition usually falls flat. And then, so that's why, you know, I made the chart. So of course my, uh, uh, the, the thing that I like to see people do is in the upper right, but this is authentic, right? The, the, the institutions that are really knocking out of the park are the ones where they're getting to using WordPress as a CMS platform so that, you know, different teams can actually execute on their own sites but still share a lot of things in common and maintain, you know, what is necessary for the institution from a governance, compliance, accessibility, security, stability, all those things are kind of dialed in. And so as that actually kind of works out, um, you know, it's getting into practicalities of what you actually see in, in some of these capabilities are managed horizontally, meaning that they're really the same across all the sites and they're usually managed by one central team. And so that's like your WordPress core. Um, that's usually the uh, authentication layer because everything wants to authenticate through the university authentication, not through WordPress. Um, it may not be Salesforce, but Salesforce is common, like some kind of CRM system because any place where you're doing a form on the website or where you need to pull out of a directory, like those are central sources of truth for data on across campus that just need to be present and available to, um, to anyone who's building a website. Um, and then I put Storybook's logo on here, but you know, swap that out for Pattern Lab from the last conversation, the idea of a design system as the key component for managing um, the look and feel and the front end components for sites, not just a shared theme, but actually a design system, because that, you know, again, campuses are big, they contain multitudes, there's other applications, there's other technologies that are out there. And if a university can adopt a design system, they can actually get multiple different things working off of the same library of components and it increases the amount of win they get. And then if you move up from that, there are things that like might be used some places and might be used others, but where there's still some kind of central governance potentially in there where you'd have a library, you'd have approved plugins that people can use, or you have tools that like Lytx, that's a, a partner of ours that does content personalization, their personalization engine. Not every website needs that, but it might be something that the university has when people do need it, they have a, an approved answer for that. Or like AI, like Gemini. Um, and then lastly, you know, and, and, and more obviously site specific hello, code hello. and design. Hello? Oh, I'm almost at my, uh, uh, I'm, I'm keeping an eye on time. So we're almost there. Um, and so the, you know, kind of thinking about vertical specific things, because at the end of the day, if you're talking about running the homepage of the university, you know, the, their flagship.edu, it's going to have some very custom requirements. Um, if you think about maybe even just the, the homepage Everybody. of the big school, like the law school or the medical school, um, or if you think about, um, again, that- Nothing, I'm about to uh, talk in my presentation, buddy. Ooh, uh, grant funded project. I think the whoever is up on next is off mute. Um, uh, so yeah, uh, I, uh, I I'm not sure what's going on there. Maybe you've joined the the wrong session, but we're we're live. So if you wouldn't mind muting while Josh finishes up, unfortunately I don't see you, uh, and so I'm not able to do that. Uh, it's a mystery voice uh, to right. me too. Um, so uh, Josh, you plow on valiantly, and right. uh, hopefully we'll figure that out in the background. 
that's fine. It's the joy of online conferencing. We're at the end of the thing. But you get my point here, right? Like you basically can work your way up from a centrally managed set of capabilities that are for the common <clears throat> use case. It might be all you need to build a simple website up to the ability to actually do something specific for a site when it's called for. This is kind of the formula for leveraging WordPress as a platform, again, not across one site or even one site network, but a portfolio of different sites and net networks to really be the go-to solution um, on campus. Um, and that is actually the end of my presentation. So I'll stop there with a thank you and see what questions might have come in. Because I was watching this and not the chat. So hopefully some folks uh, were popping in there with their thoughts. Thanks very much, Josh. Appreciate you uh, handling that so professionally um, <laughs> as it happened. I'm still not sure quite what's, what's happening, but we're, we're rolling with it. Uh, this is the joy of live. Uh, a couple of questions. I'll pop them up on screen. Look, we've got one here. Uh, from Nick says, is Cascade represented in this market share survey? So I guess that's the Cascade CMS. Yes. Uh, so uh, um, I, I, so I, I was surprised that they didn't pop up. Um, mm. I suspect though, because I, I wanted to, I didn't actually get to the, to this data. I might, I need, I need to find some more like hours <clears> with the with the BigQuery. I suspect that that Omni CMS is the <clears> name <throat> of the, a company bought Cascade and. Right. Um, and rebranded it because Cascade was like a, a, a pretty big name that I would hear from a lot. I'll, I'll go back and, and try to follow up and I'll right. post on social media with a response to that. Uh, because the, the, the really awesome thing about that HTTP archive is it's not just, you know, the July survey of 7 million sites, they have everything going back to like, you know, 2015, 2016, they weren't covering as many sites then. So it's not apples to apples, but you can look at historical data there. So I will nice. go back and see what happened with Cascade. Perfect. Super cool. Okay, look, we've got another question too. Let's bring this one up. This one's a long one. I see that Pantheon offers a decoupled solution using WordPress as a back end and Next.js for the front end. I've uh, been trying to justify using headless uh, in a higher education setting, but feel like we lose flexibility going this route. Um, so yeah, can you speak to like the pros and cons of headless for yeah, you know, especially if it's anything specific there in a university context? So I think the, um, the, the context I would give is it's a, you are, uh, losing some flexibility to gain other flexibility. Um, the the ability, you know, if you're thinking about um, just really prioritizing the end user site visitor experience, being able to leverage a framework like Next.js and, you know, all of the, the tooling that comes with it and everything you can pull out of the sort of React component ecosystem, especially if you're trying to build a really ambitious, uh, interactive user experience there, you're going to give yourself... Um, a lot of power if you're able to leverage that modern front end tool chain versus trying to do it in, um, you know, PHP templates. Um, right. On the flip side, though, you lose the ability to like install plugins and get much out of it because your 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 yeah. WordPress site is just now a, 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 a data store. Um, so you have to go into that eyes open. Uh, and where I've seen honestly the places that. Um, I've seen success with headless on campuses is one, first in doing Anna, something um, like, Anna, for instance, that uh, supports a. Sure, do it. <laughs> the thing, the thing is, is that I don't think we, he could hear us. So. That's right. It's, it's, it's a, it's, well, so at one point I had I had <clears> two <throat> tabs open because I was trying to watch the last uh, the last uh, mm. session while this, and I think there might be something like that. It split the streams. Yeah, right. But um, the. Um, yeah. Uh, so a lot of campuses have a thing where they want to do like digital signage, like they've got mm -hmm. screens all over the place and they want to have a, a central CMS that manages what's on the screens. But the the actual thing that's powering the screen, it lends itself to being like like a very thin, you know, sort of front end deal because it's mostly just like making, you know, doing motion graphics and making information fly around. That's one where I've seen like, you know, find a use case where 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 headless really does have a specifically unique, maybe unique value proposition and make that the first like the first yeah. pilot versus trying to say we want to redo an existing site in a headless context as a you know when you do it just as a technology exploration it usually um, runs aground on like the long-term complexity if you don't have a really good business reason for going in that direction right it'll it'll be challenging Right, that you know, you you get a lot out of the box uh, using WordPress as like a monolithic platform, and yeah. so if you are excited to uh, cut off the head and then do all that other stuff uh, in other ways, uh, 
and then you know then maybe it's a good idea but um th there is a, quite a lot of that right there's a yeah. lot that will not work and you won't get out of the box and so um yeah you've got to consider that I yeah and, and and that finding one of those use cases so like there that digital yeah. signage is one if if there mm. is something like a mobile app or a mobile specific right. experience that people are thinking about doing that could be another and like wordpress is actually an amazing back end for these things um yes but i think we're still a ways away because of the added complexity of headless being um an approach you would take to a more standard web experience right the caveat being, what if you've got a bunch of front-end development talent that knows that that new yeah. world there, you could specific, spe but again, that's still a business reason of like, we've got a bunch of talent we can leverage over here. Like, let's figure yeah. out how to gradually transition away from our theme to this other approach. Anyway, you, you get the picture. Okay, well, um, good stuff. Um, thank you very much, Josh. Appreciate, uh, appreciate you coming and love, love seeing graphs with real data, uh, web scale. That's very cool. Um, Thank you for having me. I am.